Okay, transition here. Uh, let's, Dad, let's talk about the next few Leo boats you built and how they got bigger and then how it evolved into when speed became an issue and why. And this boat, just, just for... Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, starting almost at the beginning of, of the 80s, 1980s, uh, the price of fish, the competition for buying fish got huge, from mostly from Japan, and herring and salmon, and there seemed to be an abundance of, of both herring and salmon. So <clears throat> I, when I first started fishing herring with my dad, we got $20 a ton for it. And all of a sudden in one year in Prince William Sound, I went from $20 a ton to $200 a ton. And, and by two years later, it was $2,000 a ton. So it was, so there was a, almost like a military armament race of people trying to get into the herring fishery with anything they could. And, and, the, and the things that were most important were, number one, you had a good spotter pilot that could, that could help you find the fish. And number two, you had a speed boat so you could get there first. Number three, you had the biggest possible net you could, could, could legally have. And, um, so, so, and those were the kinds of things you had to do in order to be competitive if you, well, if you wanted to win. That and so your boats have gotten bigger and you were doing fiberglass now instead of wood. And then you went for the speed boat at that time, which was aluminum and fiberglass. Tell us real quickly about this boat. And well, I've always had a, changed. I've always had a, um, a, a weakness for wanting to uh, change the world or change the way things are done. And it's kind of a weakness because eh, eventually you go broke by doing it because it's, it's expensive. <laughs> it's expensive to be an innovator. Called the bleeding edge. Yep, and, yeah. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> so order of magnitude, I had a fellow working for me, a good friend to this day. In fact, I'm probably going to see him here in a few weeks. Anyway, he, he, when I just tried to describe what I, what I wanted to build, he said, wow. He says, that's like an order of magnitude better. And I went, order of magnitude. I was needing a name for it. <laughs> so, so tell it, why was it different? So, well, I found a, I found a, a gen, I, in the military, I'd been in, 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 uh, in Coast Guard aviation. And sent, they sent me to schools with jet engines, uh, C-130 engines and everything. And I knew the engines really well. And I went, well, why don't I just put a jet engine in a boat? you know, and really go get, and I'll be fast. And I, eventually that's what I did. It took two years to build the order of magnitude. By the time I got it done, the, the eighties were over and there was a catastrophic failure or the markets disappeared. Yeah, a little and, bit of time, but yeah, not for very long. Yeah, right? I got, I got yeah. one season in when it was still a lucrative deal. <laughs> but at any rate, that was kind of, that was, that was part of the evolution of uh, bigger and better.